what I'll do if you hand your pole down like that, he will take a step back. Let's move his little toes. And do you hear this little clacking noise that he's making? That's his happy noise. Because he really likes to be around people. Cool. I never hold the bird. So there we go. Also, you need do you know why you have these special gloves on? If you don't, the bird's talents may rip your skin. They might do, because they're very sharp, aren't they? Yep. They're specialised for scratching and tearing. They are. Our birds have definitely got some strong feet. Now, do you feel brave enough to have a little stroke of him? So what we say is, just above his head here, there you go. Whoa, that's real soft. Also, where's his ears? So his ears, I'll show you them um, when he comes back onto my glove. Now with him, his name's Ollie, and he's actually just a year older than you are. So he's about eight years old now. Guess what? My puppy's not even a year old. Not even a year. How old is it? He's n two no, months. No nibbling. There we go. Two so, months. So with him, he has a little bit of a nibble of my fingers, and that's because he thinks I've got food. So when you touch him on the back of his head, he actually really enjoys it. And he starts to close his eyes a little bit. So Ollie really likes to be around people and he actually really likes kids more than anything because you give the best head scratches. Yeah, and also this is the best birthday gift ever. Is it? Yeah, my first favourite is to have a puppy. My second favourite is to stroke this owl. You miss it? In his mouth. And now it should be right the way into his stomach. Because he thinks that everyone tries to steal all of his food. No one ever has tried to take a mouse back off him. But he, he wants to make sure that it's in his belly. So then he's the one that's at it. Because he's done all of the hard work today. He sat really nice on yeah. your glove. He had a big scratch on his head. And he's really yeah, happy like with it. I'd like to try one last time. One last I, time? Yeah. And I'll also like to feed him a mouse as well. I wouldn't be able to get you to feed him a mouse just because I can't let you touch any of the any of the dead animals. Yeah, just in case if it has any diseases. But if he works extra hard, he'll get a second mouse. Right? I've actually got some tasty fish in my pocket for him. Ooh, so I don't really eat fish. So he actually wouldn't in the wild. He doesn't like to eat fish in the wild because it would mean he'd get very, very wet if he tried to hunt it. Dean, if you know what a sardine is. Yeah, I know a sardine, but I'd never heard of a sprat. It's like a little, little one. Okay, can you show me a sprat and then feed him? I can do. Okay. So, Whoa, this what? is him getting excited. So, this is a little sprat. Okay, that's a sprat. And you come lightly. It looks like it's a bit too big for him. He's going to have to think about it. There we go. Looks very cool. Also, some people believe that the moon shows the owls the way. And do you know how owls' eat eyes glow? They have some very... What? You can't miss. Whoa, they're huge. Huge. Literally, barely huge. There you go. Well, my puppy has about the same... Size these? Oh yeah. Yeah, and what would I? I know that's a type of sound of an of an owl, but what type of owl makes that sound? Which one? <laughs> that type of sound. I'm not too sure which one that one is. That one. Oh, that one. That's our American kestrels. American kestrels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. They're tiny. They're only about this. They are. You're going to be meeting one today. Ooh, am I even going to hold one? You are going to. Whoa! And you might even fly one. Whoa. Oh! And also, remember that game where there is some, where there's a meat bag, and then someone needs to bring it, and then the bird needs to try to catch it, and then if they don't success, they do the under swoop. That, am I going to try that? We're not, unfortunately. Okay, so that's but fine. What we are going to be doing is I'll have your glove up and the birds will be flying to it. And really? you'll, you'll be me for the day. So all of the birds will land Ooh. on your glove and you'll catch them. So with Ollie, um, he, the ear that I showed you was his big ear. So then he's got a slightly smaller one on the other side for that one. And then this is a smaller ear. So 
So it's a bit smaller and it's a bit higher up as well. How does that feel? You uh, can see his eyes starting to close there. He really yeah, likes that. He's really enjoying it. His wings are real big. Yeah, so he's not a massive fan of uh, opening up his wings, but Whoa. he's actually quite nice. Now with the other birds that we are going to be meeting today, you won't be able to be touching them like this. But he's really, really happy with it. So, yeah, because he's more of a gentle. Was he raised in captivity? He was, so we've got his I parents. knew it! I knew it! Do you know how I knew it? Because all birds that are raised in captivity are, are very kind to humans. They are. Because they were raised by humans and by their parents. So these birds love to fly and they also like to be scratched by humans. So that's how I know it was raised in captivity. Real cute. Yeah. How does that? Oh, he, just <laughs> he thought you had peck. some tasty food then. <laughs> he just lifted a little peck, but that's okay. Uh, I don't understand it. What it is is he can't see that well up close, so he thinks that all of our hands going towards him has got some food onto them. So he has a little taste of it, and then decides there's no taste of chicken there. There's no mouse, and then he, he just accepts the head scratch again. Do you want to move on to another bird? Owl move. That means yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how is your experience with the owl, Miss Oh, Connie? that was brilliant! It was so good, I even got to stroke it. It's just the best experience ever. And I hope I see the big boys sometime. But because I'm a bit too young for it, I'm hoping to see the, the small birds. Like the barn owls are medium. I'm hoping to see medium and small, not any giant raptors like golden eagles, red kite, and not her. I, if she gives me an option to, I'll just leave it to her. I'll leave it to you, Dad. I'll just see if you say okay, and and I'll just give her my my special glove. What's super thick? Oh, there's the barn owl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk onto the grass. And that just means that you'll do some really good flights with us. So you come and stand on this side of me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Gibson off and he's probably going to fly to that perch in the middle. And then I'll pop some food onto your glove and he should come back. Okay. Whoa. Now we Tasted a little bit of fish because Gibson really likes fish. Okay, that's why it looks also. Quick question. Yeah. Um, do barn owls always get that colour? Not all the time. So it depends on where they are in the world. So what? some barn owls are all grey in colour rather than having this white in colour. Okay. And then over in America, you see these darker feathers up on top. Mm -hmm. Over in America, they're a lot, lot darker as well. And it's just to help them blend into the environment. So America doesn't always look like the UK, you know, with their kind of setups of habitat. So they've got to blend in really, really well. Also, does it? Also, do those birds have like a cool sensing of when you move? They just like their head stays still, like a kookaburra. They do. Okay, that's yeah. that's how raptors are like. Even in windy weathers, kestrels definitely need it because they can wobble in the hover, so they need to have focusing heads exactly like Dad's GoPro. Exactly. So all birds, Whoa. all of our birds do that as well. Let's move all the way to the other side. Come on. 
food. You're doing it all on your own. It's real cool. Yes. Now, do you see Israeli sharp talons? Yeah. So his are a lot more sharp than what Ollie's were. And he's just going for a bit more <gasps> bigger animals. Yeah. So hey. he's coming to you without even me asking him to. And that's because you've got really good body language. So you're obviously really comfortable with all the birds. So they actually want to come and fly to you because they like you. That's cool. Grizz, if you were, you know, really, really nervous and you were a bit scared of them, you'd be a bit more hesitant. That just shows me that they just really like you because you like them. Well, I just didn't like them because of a wing snap. <laughs> That's okay. I understand that they just do that to slow down when they land. They do. He doesn't mean it at all. He's yeah. actually one of our nicest birds. Cool penguin sound, did I? You did. I really know how to make a penguin sound. Heard it from wild rats. That sounds exactly like ours. We've got one called Cory. Cory? Oh yeah, that was the one what was in the pen with all the other penguin it species. Was. With the wait for a second. <laughs> You need food to come um, here. Um, not always. Oh, right. he, he knows that. I'm always yeah. going to give it to him. Brilliant. Some of them do. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly the bigger owls. You've got to show that there is something there. Whereas he just really enjoys being out. Yeah. He flies, you know, three or four times a day. And you can see his body language. You know, he does enjoy it. Whereas, yeah, some of the others, it's a chore. <laughs> Gliding, aren't they? They are. And just see these on the edge of his feathers. You know how it's kind of like little fingertip projections rather than being it smooth? That, what's, that's what makes him really, really silent when he flies. Yeah, because first it cuts out the air, yeah. and then when it goes in, it, these bits cut out even more so it flies silently. Also, maybe I can even do it. Also, I thought, like, Let's see, I thought when it was diving and I just dodged, it will just come straight towards me and then it will just land on the floor. Sometimes he's been naughty and he tries to land on you anyway. So I don't want to try that just in case he sits there. <laughs> he's done it to me a few times. He, he likes to make sure that when I'm wearing a hat he comes and lands on me sometimes. He actually stole my hat once. And do you see that big tree up there? He went and sat on it and left it up there. <laughs> So I had to get our big set of ladders and get my hat back. I think that that one is kind of always big. But koalas have the special digestive system. What can what we don't know the poison from the stick along for round because he knows Robin. he is a very heavy bird. Oh, so let's see how we just swoop in a pack. Robin! We're in the wild, we wouldn't swoop in and attack. It's already dead animals. Yeah. So he's very clumsy. <laughs> he wanted to go up into that tree. <laughs> Jumps. There we go. Then he jumps off. Oh, 
also, does Robin also know how, also does Robin always sit on that tree and then when someone puts food underground, does he just fly around it and then he's just swooping for the attack? Is that true? Yeah, so sometimes he comes down, sometimes he'll land on the floor before he jumps onto your floor. And what it is, is he's actually really smart. And he knows because you're a bit smaller, he doesn't want to come in with all of his weight and knock you over. So he's actually a really nice bird. Okay, <laughs> also does he like any scraps? He doesn't. Now Robin's not a massive fan of being touched. They're just kind of like with strangers. You're going to come in. There you go. Well done. <laughs> that that actually feels like a five kilogram. That doesn't really feel that heavy. Robin! You're just really strong, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's real nice. Also, how big, also how fast can he jump? He's, you know what, he's not a very fast animal. Uh, also, how fast can he go on land? He, probably with his flying, he can reach probably about 20 miles per hour. That's real fast. I mean, it's not compared to our peregrine or anything like that. Yep, he can do We prefer to just kind of about glide. 200. Robin! Oh, where's Robin? He's just a bit of a lazy boy. What Robin likes to do. So, we take a person from the chest and we send it to them very, really, very, really, really, really clever person. And they do a DNA test for us. So, you know all of the clever scientists in all of the labs? We send them a feather, they take the DNA and they can tell us whether Robin's a boy or girl, and Robin's a boy. So did you name him because Robin's more of a boy name than a girl name, right? Yeah, and we named him because they're a hooded vulture, so Robin Hood. Also, what's his full name? Is it Robin Hood with his full name? Technically, yeah, that's on his paperwork. His name is Robin Hood. Last one, okay? Yeah. Well, let's first put it somewhere very far and then put it on the floor and see what happens. Why well, you want him to go onto the floor? Yeah, and see how he eats on the floor. Robin! Are you ready, Robin? <coughs> Robin! Hi! <coughs> Robin! I'm not too sure whether he trusts us. Because sometimes, so this is a little chicken. Anish, no. So with it, sometimes when Robin's being a bit naughty, People have to throw food on the floor to encourage him out. So he thinks I'm in bad trouble. Whereas, if he's flying to your glove, he knows that we really like him. So what I'll do is I'll get him up onto his glove. Yeah. And then I've got a big bit of food that he on the floor. So he just walks it down in one big go. Cool! Also, how heavy then can these guys get to? So, the heaviest that I've worked with is about four and a half pound, which is just about, just under three kilograms. So they're actually one of the smallest species of vultures. Oh, so what's not the biggest? I see the real big vulture was a bit big. Yeah, so we used to have in our middle avery really, really big vultures. Yeah. Now, at the moment, they're over in our, our building next door because it's too cold for them. So during our winter months, they get all of the tasty food. So at the moment, they're on a load of beef and they're on more turkey than everything. <laughs> All of our birds um, around Christmas get turkey for the butchers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they absolutely love it. Um, it's fantastic for them. Um, and yeah, it just makes them really, really basically overweight. That's what we want in our yeah. winter months. There we go. Whoa, nice wings. Also, these don't have much of the colour. This. Yeah, no, his wings aren't very soft like the owls. Yeah, because they, they want to make sound so they can cook, so they can make other vultures retracted and baked. And also, they need to be a bit more waterproof than our owls. Why? Oh yeah, because meat has blood, and blood is like a type of liquid, so they need to be more waterproof, so the liquid just slips off. And they really like to have a big bath as well. Every time they've had a big meal and they've had a bit messy, they dump themselves in the bath, get themselves really, really nice and clean. Oh, do, you, uh, do you mean they just splash themselves in water? Um, in water or oh, puddles. Okay. So if there's a big bit of water, not so much deep like the pond, 
you know, a small bit of water, he'll pop himself in, he'll fluff in all of his feathers up. And he'll get nice and clean, because he doesn't want any blood all over him. And he's got all of these little small head feathers yeah. to make sure that when he does get a load of mucky food, he can just pop himself into a puddle and his head's really, really nice and Also, clean. I understand how he gets all those scratches from the tents. What? The big scratch on his Yeah, so sometimes I'm very naughty and I don't always wear my big glove with them. And that's just because I've been working with them for four years. I'm used to all of my little scratch tans. Because obviously I don't want any of the birds scratching you. Robin! There you go. Ha! That's real good! Well, how how full are their smells? So with him, he's got a really good sense of smell, but our turkey vultures are a lot better. Also, so he usually he normally uses his eyes. Also, what happened to that claw that just disappeared from So when he was younger he had a little scrap with his brother and it fell off a little bit and he just didn't grow back. Now with it, it doesn't hurt him at all, um, it doesn't bother him because he doesn't use his talons like our other birds. Well, Robin! <laughs> yeah. He's got a big wingspan, hasn't he? Yeah. Every time he lands, he hits the side of your head. <laughs> yeah, I'm just too dead. Are you just, just a dog dead? Also, quick thing. How? What is the heaviest flying bird? That we've got? Oh. No, on the... Is this a great bird? I don't know. It's... I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Because okay. there's a load of massive birds. The one with the biggest wingspan is the wandering albatross, but I'm not too sure of how heavy it is. I'm not too sure if some of our eagles are a bit heavier as well. And the biggest bird that we fly... Oh no, it wouldn't be. Um, the biggest... We've actually got a Stella Sea Eagle. So she's weighing in at 14 pounds, whereas our golden eagle's about 8 pounds. So she's a lot bigger. But then our big vultures, at the moment, they're about 25 pounds. Whoa! I know. Also, we don't catch them. <laughs> also, how heavy is the heaviest? How, which is the biggest bird you have in the sanctuary? So it's one of our big vultures. But, okay. But then, the one in the hell, like in the box. In like the neighbor house yeah so they're over there at the moment whilst it's a bit cold but we do have some of our other big vultures on display we've got some rupaul's vultures and they're probably about 20 pound at the moment 20 pounds yeah so i can miss four pounds but 20 pounds oh, that's a lot i've tried to pick one of them up before on my glove and i could only last about five seconds <laughs> but i'm also really weak you're probably stronger than i am also I even can lift my mum into her. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> that is right. Mm -hmm. You ready for one last big flight with Robin? Yeah. Robin! There you go. Big bear of turkey. How's it stuck on your beak, buddy? than ours isn't it so when he's flying really high into the sky he can see the smallest of carcasses so he knows he's got his dinner also if there's a carcass on this big he'll be able to see it like this big even if it was something like the size of a cat he'd be able to see it Lift it up, Anish. Lift it up. Yeah, lift it up. Go. Lift it up. There we go. It's so heavy. <laughs> Thank you. It's really heavy. He is, isn't he? Mm -hmm. You did very well, though. I have adults that try and catch Robin, and I see their arms fall. 
So you notice how she's really, really slick to feathers in, and she's really, really small. That's because she's she's just taken. She's realised that there's no scary buzzards around. She starts to self fluff herself up, and she'll probably start to be a bit more vocal soon. Also, oh, she just also also does she always do this? Just stabilise her head even when the glove is moving. She does. If she's focusing on something, she can make sure that her head still stays really, like really still. Like this? Like this? Yeah. And hover? And she, I'm imitating the hover, so he... So she... Exactly, so, so she, when she's hovering, that head stays really, really still. It's the same thing as like chickens as well. Chickens are really good at being able to do it. So what is the best mood who can easily do this? I know raptors really need to do it. But most birds can do it, especially since they're flying. Well, chickens can, more yeah. hens can fly, but just for short amounts of time. Yeah, they're not too good at it. Same with pheasants. Pheasants aren't the best of flyers. Peacocks, not very yeah. good. They're best at showing display and scaring off bigger creatures. The, their best specialty is that. Also, what's this the smallest bird you have here? Probably her, so she weighs three ounces. Where most of it, like three gram, three ounces, about hundred grams. So hundred grams. That means one hundred rice grains. It's the same as her. There's not much to her, is there? <laughs> she's actually doing. <laughs> when I do, she's very good at keeping her head still. Also, she looks like a bit of a dancer. What? She even <laughs> looks like she prefers it. So what is the biggest peregrine you have here? So at the moment we've only got the one which is Corey, who is the one that you met last time. I'm sure he's in a meet and greet. But at the moment we're doing a load of our building work. So where the falcons used to be um, has been changed into all of the aviaries but they're not quite done yet. So our falcons are off you at the moment. Mm. Real nice. These feet are real cool. Those are very sharp talons. They are. But well, she doesn't normally grip that hard. Also, how big can these little guys get to? That's as big as she's ever going to be. No, so. how, how are their average size? How can they really be in the first few hours? How are their max size in that's, the wild? That's basically, because she's a girl, she's a lot more, she's bigger than all of our males. Whoa. And that's as big as they'll get. But she can take things like pigeons out in the wild. That's because they're really, really fast. And they do have strong feet, but she doesn't use hers with us because she's so friendly. You can have a back. I'll take a one picture, Anish. Yeah, if, okay, if you don't mind. Right. 